Hey, it's Jeff from Home Renovision, and today is part two of our Backyard Oasis build. Today we are talking about this thing right here, Captain Ugly. This fence is three years old, and it is a cedar fence, and it's already gone to mold and to fungus. What we're going to do today is show you how to clean this up and get a professional finish on it so that it'll last 50 years instead of 20 before it rots out. Yep, that's right. So we're going to jump right into this. I'm going to, all my materials and tools today only cost 200 bucks. So for $200, you can double the life expectancy of your fence with a little bit of maintenance. And we're going to show you how simple that is, because if you use the right product, there's never any sanding, no scraping, no peeling, no blistering. It's all in this video. Let's jump right in. Let's go through the stages, because when you got a gray fence, you got to clean it first. We're using this deck cleaner. Basically, it's a bucket of bleach, <laughs> okay? And it's a concentrate. If you read the instructions, it'll tell you if it's not bad, you can mix it one per one, one per eight. So this is like, what, a gallon? Yeah. You can go one per eight gallons, and that's great. And if it's really ugly, you can go one or three. The point is this, bleach, whenever it comes in contact with organic, like fungus and mold, it gets destroyed as it does the killing, okay? If you're not sure, and you don't want to work that hard, just go to one to three, and that's what we're going to do. We have a major labor shortage, so if you're going to do anything around your house, consider just getting the job done yourself. Here we go. Don't pour too fast, and pour on the side like this. See, if you go like this, you're going to get all kinds of air. But you go like this, Okay, you got a lot more control and you're not going to glug, which means it won't splash. Boom. Remember, it's bleach. So if you're going to be weird about it and make all kinds of splash and wear glasses. I'm putting all this in a pail for a reason, because I got a deck brush. I stick it on a pole. But here's the deal. My deck brush is a little bit too wide to get in this pail. First order business is cut off a little bit of the deck brush. Ah, this is the perfect size for a deck brush. <laughs> Just a quick note to the guys who make these things. Um, think about it. We're using a pail. Make it fit. What are you going to do? Put this in a paint tray liner? Mix up just a few ounces at a time? All right, now, now I can get all the way to the bottom of that pail. Good to go. Now, this is really simple. Because it's bleach, the goal really is to get this water from here to the top and let it run down. And remember, some of this might work its way around to the other side of the fence where the neighbor is, but if they're not taking care of their side of the fence, it means they don't really care, so they really don't have a license to complain. All right, now the reason I'm doing this is because I'm gonna be staining my finish deck as well, right? Hard to stain the finish deck if I don't get this cedar change color back to its original glory. Okay, you know what amazes me is in here in Ottawa, all the new construction, they're famous for putting up these cheap cedar fences to separate the backyards from the, the streets and the walking areas and all that sort of thing. And so the entire town is full of rotted out cedar on neighborhoods that are 20 years old. And they're all decrepit and falling down and falling over. But because it's the city's problem, <laughs> they're the ones that have to replace all the fences. So think about it. You got a product that's designed to last 50 years, but they never put caps on them. So the posts rot out pretty quick. And then they don't put any kind of finish on it. So the 50 year wood only lasts 20 years. So you got millions and millions and millions of dollars of cedar fencing all over town. Countless number of trees cut down and make a pretty fence. You know, cedar actually costs almost twice as much as pressure treated lumber. But instead of using pressure treated lumber, they use cedar and then it goes gray. Here, this is a joke. Check this out. This is three years old. Take a look at the stairs that are built off the back of the house. Pressure treated lumber, three years old. You tell me which one you'd rather have as a fence. It is kind of funny though, because at the end of the day, even if it was a pressure treated fence and you waited a couple of years before you put your stain on it, you could still put a cedar color stain on pressure treated and it would look exactly the same. So if anybody knows why the hell we're cutting down cedar to make all of this infrastructure when no one's taking care of it, I would love to know. Because that's part of the reason why cedar's so bloody expensive because they use it in applications like this when no one takes care of it. You know me, on my channel, I like to be practical. There's nothing practical about putting sexy wood on a fence just to let it rot out. Lots of folks out there, they're like, oh, I love the look of grade cedar. I'm like, there's no way in hell you're gonna tell me that's sexy. The only people who like grayed out cedar are either crazy or lazy. But this only takes a couple of hours. And you don't even have to wash it like this if you hurry up and get it done when you get a brand new house. Now, a couple of minutes, we're gonna show you how to stain it. I'm gonna let this all bleach out. I'm starting back at the beginning, just because uh, it works better in the sun. It's not a very sunny day today. So I got enough water here. I'm gonna try to get a second coat. 
Let's see what we can do. So a lot of you right now are screaming, Jeff, why aren't you using a pressure washer? Well, here's the thing, guys. If you use a pressure washer, yes, you'll get it cleaner faster. You're also gonna raise the surface of the grain and it'll accept the stain really nice. Probably accept it better than the deck boards. We're trying to get something uniform, but here's the thing. Look at this neighborhood, 30 units and what, three acres? <laughs> like, think about it. I'm not expecting this, everyone on the street to own a pressure washer. Now, if you're gonna make a living doing this for people, by all means, get a pressure washer, make your life simple. But the purpose of this video is to empower the other 29 homeowners on the street to fix their own damn fence without having to borrow my pressure washer. <laughs> and if it's this easy, I mean, a little blood, sweat, and tears here, right? Big deal. Yeah, I'm working, whatever. Feel a good, good sweat. I only have to do this once. Now, so you know, I'm at my daughter's house. And she done it when she first got the place. Well, I wouldn't be sitting here scrubbing this thing right now. But everybody has priorities, right? So think about it. If you just bought a house, Maybe make staining your fence a priority so you don't have to go through all this hassle. A good penetrating stain with UV protection is going to last five to seven years before you have to reapply. If you use the right product, you don't even have to sand or wash or nothing. I'm feeling pretty good here. I'm gonna hit that one section one more time and then we're gonna get on with it. And yes, I could have used a paint stick. It's the same thread. And if you're working in a place where you don't have a lot of space, you can't have a big stick. Pick this up, it's like three bucks. You can just cut it in half on your saw. Work with a little one. But I wear gloves if you're gonna be close to that water. Now. Let's take a look at how nasty this is. I'm gonna just pull out the suds here for you so you can see how incredibly gray this is. You see how much dirt is in there already? That's how much just came off as soon as I touched it with the brush. Can't wait to get a hose on this bad boy. I love how a good solid rubber hose like this, it's like kink free. And then somebody comes along and makes something that looks like a solid rubber hose, but it's, it's kind of like a mixture of rubber and plastic. It's just not the same quality, but designed to look like it. In the old days, if it was green, it was plastic. If it was black, it was rubber. Life was simple. Now they make imitation plastic to look like rubber. Okay, we're gonna take a 20 minute break. Let the bleach do its job. I mean, you can see already here, look at all the crud that's just sitting on the surface waiting to be washed off. Okay, let's be patient, Jeff. <laughs> Sometimes moving forward is moving backward. So obviously this stuff works. Um, the secret here really is pressure, getting in the grooves. And to clean out the grain, you've got to brush with the grain. You'll see the brush lines here when I went the opposite direction. Now I want to get rid of those. So now I've got to get the fence wet, rub with the grain, get everything in the right direction so when I stain it, I don't have brush lines. Okay. So. With the board. And you're going to see a bunch of crap coming off, right? That's the, that's the goop that I'm, trying, I'm looking for. And this process isn't without its work. Like I said, if you have a pressure washer, use it. If you don't, you can still get a good result. The goal here is to get the cedar as clean as you can. So when we're done doing the rest of our deck, it's all stained together, looking good. Focusing on the, the tops and the bottoms where all the goop is. Maybe wash my brush too, it's filthy. That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> now that we showed you the basics, we're gonna let the cameraman get out of the way. Matt and I are gonna get busy, and we'll jump right into the stain. Maddie. Matty. What? Yeah, right. You know what it's taking for me not to do this right you now? You don't have the balls. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is my favorite stain, guys. But if it sits still for too long, like when your videographer gets COVID and you gotta wait two weeks to finish off the project, <laughs> you're gonna find it's incredibly settled. So all of the UV protection is like a paste sitting on the bottom of the ground. It's thicker than toothpaste. So this mixer is just a little redneck, but it'll get the job done. There we go. Watch your feet. Better to have 80% of your stain UV protection than none at all. Or 70. <laughs> yeah, this is a little redneck, but sometimes the store is just too far away. There we go. I'm happy with that. 
let's get to work. All right, so basically the concept is this. You wash your fence down, it starts to dry. You start working where it's just drying out. The wood itself is actually a higher level of moisture at this point. The pores are open and ready to receive a stain. Now we're gonna use what's called a penetrating sealer stain. Quick history lesson, we used to use oil back in the day. Oh, save the planet, we stopped with oil. Then we had to cut down twice as many trees because the fences didn't last because we were using a water-based product. Okay, maybe we go to go back to oil. Then somebody came up with new water-based penetrating stain so we can get rid of oil again. So here we are, flip side. Now we got a product that is water-based, penetrates the wood, and it doesn't skin. Most products that are out there, oil included, skins on the surface. It sits on the surface, okay? There's your oil. Now the water base used to go in there, but it also had a skin. And this is where we ran into problems because water base didn't last very long. And so after three or five years, depending on what surface, how much sun, your geography, it would blister and peel and that skin would come up and then you'd have to scrape and sand and all that prep work that everybody went mad over. Now we got a penetrating product that goes into the wood without a skin. And so all of the protection against UV rays and everything is happening in the wood. And when it wears down, you'll notice, because when it rains, it's not going to beat up. Okay, you won't get that, that silicone windshield effect anymore. And all you do is you come along and you add one more coat of this product, and it goes back into the wood again, because now it's absorbing product. It'll absorb this another coat. Nothing ever sitting on, this, on the surface. So now when we stain, we never have to sand and scrape ever again. That's what makes this product amazing. That's why it's my favorite. That's why if you're gonna use a stain, use C2 Guard. Pour it into a big pail like this, okay? Use this brush to constantly mix it as you go. This makes a mess, which is why I'm using it on the fence first. We'll do the deck later. And we're gonna use the deck with a different system, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. A lot of really good tips and tricks. It's gonna be a huge deck, built-in benches, uh, privacy screen, we're rebuilding the stairs. Every fire feature, okay, you're not going to want to miss it. So, because it's water-based, we want to start at the top, because it'll always drip down, all right? Now, this is our privacy. This is the property line. And less is more here. You don't want to put too much pressure, all right? And we're going to just wet the surface. It's kind of like painting an in interior wall. You want this brush to be wet enough that it'll, right, drip, but not drip. See that? Perfect. This will keep you under control. Right here. Now, the best thing you can do with this product is do one piece of wood at a time. Because it's a penetrating sealer, you'll get those overlap marks if you're not careful. Whenever you're doing horizontals, nice and clean brush. Make sure you're watching your edge, which is down here. Okay? Again, you're painting from inside. You're not having a ton of excess product. It's not dripping all over. All right, if you're not sure, if you've never done it before, find a discreet place where you can practice a little bit first. Go upside down with a little more pressure, and once it's drying out, if you do upside down first, it'll drip everywhere. And then board like that, the underside of that board, and then do the board. Okay? Nice and simple. All right, this is the whole process. Nothing really to it. Now, you want to stain what I call wet on wet, which means you're going to get two coats of this. Okay, the first one is going to open up the pores. The second coat is going to provide that superior protection that you want for long term. But remember, whenever you touch a piece of wood, you want to finish it or you're going to get overlap marks. All right, because it is a penetrating sealer. And once it penetrates, it starts to seal. <laughs> and so you will get overlap marks. The stain penetrates into different layers of the wood. All right, that's the secret right there. Now, what I've done is almost three minutes of work. Three minutes is kind of my, my factor on a day like today. Today we're what, in the low 20s, Canadian temperature, uh, probably 80 degrees, okay, in the American scale. So what I'm looking at doing here is about three minutes worth of work. If it's hotter, maybe two minutes. If it's cooler, maybe four minutes, five minutes. All right, give it a chance to absorb in, because this really is just opening up the pores. And when I've done three minutes of work, I'll go right back to where I started. It's very important to keep an eye on where your production schedule is here. There we go. Just for good measure, I'm gonna do my last horizontal board. There, that's three minutes. You have an option with this product, these brushes. 
this is that same universal thread. So you can always go get a big stick if you're not trying to be as precise. Okay, we'll do this post again. Wet on wet. So before it fully dries, you want to get the second coat on. Okay, and that'll help the first coat to penetrate even deeper. And I know not everybody's going to treat this like uh, you're painting in your house trim. I like to, just because I know what happens if you get spots on the wood. It shows up a little blotchy. Now a lot of people ask me, where can I go to get a good stain? What do I think about what's available at the box stores? And at this point right now, my advice is really simple. Um, avoid the box store for products like this. And this is the C2, it's my favorite paint, guys. And if you're interested in getting this as your stain, there'll be a link in the video description. Everybody in the United States can get this mixed and then delivered to their house. A can of stain is actually free shipping and 20% off with our code. So I'm going to recommend it. If you live in Canada, we don't have that service yet. But if you're in Ottawa, head down to Randall's. Say hi to the team down there. Tell them Jeff sent you.